So this video is called Roles of the President, and we're going to be examining what the President does all day. He's pretty busy, as you can see from his desk here, so let's take a look at what the President's day might consist of. So the first main job the President has is called Chief of State, and as the Chief of State, the President acts as the symbol of the United States. And what this will look like is the President will give speeches on national holidays, the president might um, give a scholarship award at a college. He might welcome the championship baseball team to the White House. So all of those ceremonial jobs that the president does, when he's doing those, that's when he's called the chief of state. In some countries, their pol political leader, like the president, wouldn't do this. Like in England, they have the queen that would be the chief of state. But in the United States, our president fills the role of ceremonial leader and political leader. Here's a picture of JFK. He is throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game. This is just one of the many times a president might be acting as chief of state. Anytime they're doing a ceremonial thing like this, chief of state. Moving on to probably the job that takes up most of the president's time is when the president is acting as the chief executive. In this role, he is the boss. When the president is the boss, he is the boss of millions of government workers all around the country. He basically runs the show of the executive branch, enforcing laws. He might be choosing officials for cabinet positions. His main job is to appoint lots of important people to lots of important jobs, like the CIA, the FBI. Those are members of the executive branch. And he also might be meeting with his cabinet members. Here's a picture of George W. Bush acting as chief executive, meeting with his cabinet members. All of his advisors that advise him on lots of different topics. Moving on, we have the president acting as chief diplomat. He is our voice abroad. He decides our position with other countries and decides how we deal with other countries and the potential problems that come with those countries. So what this might look like, he could fly to another country on Air Force One and meet with them. He might host leaders at the White House. So if a, a person comes here, he would host them. And then he might send diplomats around the world to meet on his behalf. Here is a picture of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He is meeting with a couple of other world leaders, um, either during or after World War II. So this is kind of what it would look like. He'd sit down with them and talk about issues. And that is a very important job of the president. Moving right along is one that you're probably all familiar with, and that is the president as commander-in-chief. He is the top general, the main military decision maker of our country. In fact, the president is ultimately responsible for making all military decisions and making all strategy decisions, although many of those decisions are probably made by the generals that he appoints. The president might make a decision on a question like, should an area be attacked? What troops to send where? Is a base fully equipped? All of those kind of military decisions the president would make. Here's a picture of the most famous commander-in-chief, George Washington. He, of course, was a great general before he became president, and it was not uncommon for the main military leader to become president back in the 17 and 1800s. Nowadays, our presidents don't have very much military experience, so they have to rely heavily on the generals that they appoint um, for aid and strategic maneuvers. But the president is ultimately the one that makes the final decision on those very important war issues. Moving right along, we have the chief legislator. The president is in charge of having an influence on Congress, and although he's not directly involved in the lawmaking pro process, we know from our simulation last week that he can suggest and pressure Congress to pass a certain law. He can sign a bill into law at the end of the lawmaking process. It needs his signature, or he can veto the bill and, and give it back to Congress with a no on it. And he's also in charge of updating Congress on the State of the Union every year. He gives a very important speech about how the country is doing. That is chief legislature. Here is one of the more famous moments in lawmaking history when President Lyndon Johnson is signing into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964, allowing African Americans to have equal rights in our country. So there are many famous laws, but I picked that one to show you because it was probably one of the more famous ones. The next job the president does is the chief of party. He is a symbol of the political party that he represents. Of course, the president 
because he's the president, has the biggest name in his or her political party. As the biggest name in his party, he has a couple of sort of jobs he has to do. Oftentimes the president will campaign for other members of the party. So say, for example, there's a Democrat running for a Senate in Iowa. President Obama might, might fly to Iowa and tell people in Iowa to vote for that person. The president would also attend rallies to promote the issues and values of the political party that he or she represents. Here's a picture of President Obama attending a Democratic Party rally, and you can see all the people in the background all getting excited about the Democratic Party. That's the one job of the president. Moving right along, we have the manager of the prosperity up next. This is a job that is extremely important. The president serves as the economic leader of our country. The president is concerned with tax rates, unemployment, business profits, and the general economic state of the country. And what this might look like is the president might meet with business leaders, might meet with economic advisors, or push Congress for certain laws. Here is the president meeting with the CEO of a major company discussing um, job creation or economic growth or anything of that sort. Almost done here. We only have a couple more. Um, the president also serves the job of protector of the peace. And this is in times of emergency, the president is in charge of protecting people in times of need. So the president has to fly around the country if there's a major disaster of some kind. Usually it's like a hurricane or a tornado or maybe a drought. And the president would decide to give federal aid to people who were affected by a major disaster. He might deploy troops if there's problems with um, looting or peacekeeping or just troops to help clear debris. The president also is in charge of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And FEMA is in charge of giving things like food and water and other resources, maybe housing, to people that are displaced by a major storm. Here is an example that wasn't a, nat uh, a, a natural disaster, but was in fact an attack. This is President Bush at Ground Zero after 9-11, and he is sort of helping run the show and, and inspire people and trying to um, tell people that everything's going to be okay. This is what the president of the peace might look like touring the devastated areas and deciding when aid needs to be given. Finally, the last job of the president is called protect, uh, president of the West, and he is the protector of freedom, not only in the United States, but actually around the world. The president spreads the message of democracy and freedom to all parts of the world and encourages democracy whenever possible. Oftentimes when people are being mistreated by their government, the president speaks out against it, even though it does not happening here in the United States. The president, you know, wants everyone in the world to be treated well. Here is an example of the president acting as the president of the West, speaking to the people of Germany here. He is urging uh, the Soviet Union to tear down the Berlin Wall, which is separating East and West Germany. And he eventually gets this to happen, and he wins a Nobel Peace Prize when the people of East and West Germany are reunited following the fall of the Berlin Wall in the 1980s. And that is it. Those are the jobs of the president. So when you come into class tomorrow or whenever you're watching this video, we will do some work with what these jobs might look like in different situations.